You're listening to WSPD 77.1. This is Speed 77 Radio, your home for motorsports. Hello everyone, I'm Tom Baker from Race Chaser Online and I'd like to welcome you to the night Speed 77 radio broadcast. On tonight's Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Report, we'll talk CRA Super Series, UARA Stars Late Model Series, we'll talk a little bit of NASCAR Modifieds, and the past Late Model Series. We'll also hear from both 14-year-old Late Model racer Garrett Jones, a young phenom who just wrapped up the championship at Five Flags Speedway in Pensacola, Florida, and Cassius Clark, a veteran super late model racer from the North Country who just added the title of 2013 Pass North Series champion to his racing resume. All that, plus an interview with ARCA CRA Super Series 2013 champion Travis Braden. But we kick off tonight's conversation by bringing in our Speed 77 radio producer and co-host of tonight's show, Jacob Seelman, to talk about a young racer who's making a name for himself up and down the East Coast, Florida's Garrett Jones. Jacob, you had the opportunity to watch Garrett race in the UARA Stars Series at Kingsport a few weeks back. He's been really turning some heads this year. That he has, Tom. He's been uh, outstanding in the late model rakes all season long. He's uh, impressed on the UARA Tour. He leads the rookie standings over Chandler LeVan by 30 points with just uh, three races to go on the schedule. He's been unbelievable in his native state of Florida at Five Flags Speedway. Uh, As you said, won the uh, track championship down there becomes the uh, youngest driver to win a pro late model championship at five flag speedway and the first uh, out of towner if you will to pull off that feat um and with his age just turning 14 years old he's now eligible to race this weekend in the virginia's for racing lovers 300 late model spectacular at a uh, martinsville speedway as well it'll be his first nascar late model start so he's turned a lot of heads tom and he's also got a lot going for him here as 2013 comes to a close well let's wait no longer or go no further let's hear from garrett i know you had a chance to talk to him a little bit earlier so uh Let's listen to Garrett Jones. Garrett, first off, thank you for taking the time to talk with us tonight. Uh, You actually ended up winning the uh, late model track championship down there at Five Flags this year. Uh, It certainly was a thriller coming down to the last race. You guys won it by a single point. Talk about that last race of the season because it was a lot of drama surrounding uh, you and your championship rival, and ultimately you came out on top. Oh, yeah, I mean... Down at Five Flags the last weekend, we uh, definitely had a lot of fun, uh, especially after it was all over. It was the hardest weekend we've had all year, um, in my opinion. After having a little trouble in tech and uh, getting that fixed, and just having to start near the back, um, that made it really hard. And our competitor in second place in the points actually set the pole with a new track record. So uh, we were sweating it a little bit right there before the race started. I mean, everybody on the team thought it was over. We didn't have any chance, and um, I had to carry them and just make it seem better. And once we got on the racetrack, I mean, we had a really good car. Just we got docked one lap in qualifying, and we couldn't show it in qualifying how good of a car we had. And uh, in the race, it, I mean, we came from 28 to I think we finished seventh or sixth in there and beat our competitor by one spot and uh, one point. So it, it was definitely a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Like you said, I know the team was sweating it, but you were able to keep calm under all the pressure and bring home the hardware. What does it mean to you to come away with the track championship at Five Flags? Uh, Well, it's pretty cool. I mean, we left there with a uh, hard charger award, a championship, and a a pretty cool-looking trophy. So to me, it's just cool because I'm pretty sure uh, I was the first out-of-town driver to win a championship uh, in the Pro Late Model Series over at Five Flags. And being uh, 13 and just turned 14, uh, it's just been a really good season with us in that car. And it really makes it easier to go into the uh, Snowflake 100 down there this December and next year leading up to all those events. 
And I know, uh, obviously, uh, running the pro late model this year, but you've also been running some UARA late model events this year as well. Uh, challenging for Rookie of the Year. You're actually leading the Rookie of the Year points in the UARA right now. Talk about your UARA season and uh, a little bit about if it's lived up to your expectations so far. Um, well, I mean, this year with the UARA series, it's, it's had its ups and downs, um, especially, uh, Anderson and Lonesome Pines having back-to-back flat tires. That, that really got us devastated because, I mean, we had the fastest cars at those two racetracks that we've had all year. And having those two flat tires really was devastating. But, you know, other than that, I mean, we raced Hickory twice and we ran really good over there both times. And, um, everywhere else we've been, I mean, we've ran pretty good and, you know, I think we could have done better, and I think we will next year. I think this year was more of a learning curve for all these tracks. You know, it, it, it's just been a lot of fun, and uh, running with all those veterans like Travis Swain and uh, Ronnie Bassett Jr. and Dylan Bassett and all those guys, I mean, I, I, you can learn so much just by following them. And then when you finally get to beat them, it just makes it that much better. What are we going to see from you in 2014? Are we going to see you back in... UARA again next year? Um, well, we certainly hope so. We're not real sure on our schedule yet. Uh, turning 14, I know we're going to run a couple of next car races, and um, hopefully we can run uh, most of the schedule like this year for the UARA. And then with our uh, pro late model, um, that's still up in the air, and really all of it's up in the air still. But, you know, we're going to be doing NASCAR, or UARA, um, just a little bit of all of it. And obviously, I know you can't do it on your own. I know there's a large group of support back there that helps make it happen for you. Who makes it happen for Garrett Jones? Well, um, just recently, uh, Electro Fuses hopped on board with us, and it's been great. I mean, the people over there, they're awesome. And then just all the other athletes over there, like Tiger Woods and David Ortiz and Aaron Foster, um, all those guys, it's, it's just really cool to be on the same athletes list with them. So um, definitely Electro Fuse and Fuse Science. You know, my mom and dad and grandparents and all my family just making it happen so I can go get to the racetrack every weekend. I mean, I couldn't do it without all those guys. And Garrett, obviously best of luck to you as you continue to push upward. We wish you all the best in your remaining races this season and look forward to a lot out of you here as we move forward and especially going towards 2014 as well. Thank you for talking with us tonight. Oh yeah, anytime. Thanks for having me on the show. Jacob, you and I both know how big of a race the Martinsville late model race is every year and how much that's just an absolute crown jewel to have on somebody's schedule and to have that trophy that grandfather clock, that special Martinsville trophy. And you know what? That's going to be a huge race for this young man. But the way he's going and the, with the season he's had, I think he's shown he can race with anybody. But the question is going to be whether or not he can go the distance. And, of course, there's just all kinds of luck involved with Martinsville as well. Yes, that is going to be the question. It does take a lot of luck, and as you said, he's one of the youngest drivers in the field, so it's going to be very interesting to see if Garrett can hang with uh, the veterans. Uh, you've got guys like Lee Pulliam, like Philip Morris, veterans who have won this race before, and for Garrett, it's really going to be uh, as much of a getting-up-to-speed event as it is anything. I don't know if we can expect any major noise from him here in his first trip to Martinsville, but I think he could surprise us. I think as he's done all year, he may yet turn some heads and at least show that uh, he belongs in the late model ranks here. Uh, like I said, I don't expect anything spectacular out of him, but stranger things have happened at Martinsville, but I do think it'll be a veteran taking home the grandfather clock. Well, it, anything can happen in Martinsville. We know that because it often has. And the first, the first uh, task he's going to have is to qualify. If he can manage to do that and he can show some speed, well, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, we're not looking for a win by any stretch, but a top, a top 10 to 15 for him would be a win. And that's Garrett Jones and somebody certainly to watch in the future. We're going to take our first caution flag of the evening. When we come back, we are going to switch gears. We're going to talk some, some ARCA CRA, and we're going to hear from the ARCA CRA track champion, Travis Braden. That's and more is coming up 
right after these words, you're listening to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Report on Speed 77 Radio and Race Chaser Online. Stay with us. For 17 years, Stock Car Steel has been a leading material supplier to the racing industry. We're proud they're a motorsports content partner here at Race Chaser Online. The biggest names in NASCAR trust Stock Car Steel for raw materials such as carbon steel, chrome molly, DOM, aluminum, plastics, and much more. You can't build a race car without the basic materials, and Stock Car Steel is the place to get them. Don't forget to also visit Stock Car Steel's sister company, SRI Supplies, for racing and industry. SRI is the place to go for all your shop supply needs. Not bolts, rivets, tapes, adhesives, cutting tools, chemicals, body shop supplies, paint shop supplies, lubricants, and more. A well-stocked race shop is a winning race shop, and the path to winning begins with three letters, SRI. For more information, visit StockCarSteel.com or SRI-Supplies.com. Check them both out on Facebook or call them toll-free at 1-888-752-7272, 1-888-752-7272. The odds of a young girl being discovered by an industry insider while singing to herself pumping gas? One in 300 million. The odds of the daughter of a clergyman from Severn, Maryland spending 11 weeks at number one on the U.S. singles charts? One in 19 million. The odds of going on to win six Grammy Awards? One in 1.4 million. The odds of selling over 40 million records? One and 800,000. The eyes of this musician and performer having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 110. I'm Tony Braxton, and I encourage you to learn the signs of autism at AutismSpeaks.org. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. Autism Speaks. It's time to listen. Brought to you by Autism Speaks in the Ad Council. Hi, this is Jamie McMurray here for RAD, the entertainment industry's voice for road safety. Want to make a difference? It's simple. Be responsible. Plan ahead. Designate before you celebrate. Friends don't let friends drive drunk. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. You're listening to WSPD 77.1. This is Speed 77 Radio, your home for motorsports. Welcome back to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Report. We now turn our attention to the Midwest-based ARCA CRA Super Series, where West Virginia's Travis Braden wrapped up the 2013 Series Championship with his impressive fourth win of the year at Lucas Oil Raceway in Claremont, Indiana last weekend. The victory was the fourth of the season for the young Braden, who was the series Rookie of the Year in 2012. It is his first championship in one of the division's marquee racing series. We caught up with Travis. We talked to him about his history, his transition to late models, and his 2013 championship season. Here's what Travis had to say. Travis, you are from West Virginia. The CRA series races mostly in the Midwest. How does a West Virginia boy end up in the CRA series in the first place, let alone to become the 2013 series champion? Well, I tell you, it's been a long time coming for sure. But, uh, you know, I I started racing when I was a kid, obviously, as, as many of us racers do nowadays. And, uh, you know, it's just been kind of a, a path that's kind of mowed its own, you know, its own trail. And, uh, you know, two years ago, I would have never believed I'd be sitting where I am now. But, you know, things have gone right. And, uh, you know, I've proven myself in each step, and I've had a lot of great people surrounding me uh, that have helped me, uh, you know, not just as, a, you know, my skill set, but also off the track, you know, those types of things. And, um, you know, just, you know, what, everything I've learned my whole career has helped me get to this point and then succeed when I have gotten here. Well, you've certainly succeeded. You won your first ever CRA Series race at Winchester back in 2011. You were the Series Rookie of the Year in 2012, and now you're the 2013 ARCA CRA Series champion. 
it, just an amazing season for you. I know it started out a little shaky, but boy, when you got hot, you really got hot, and you've ended up with four wins so far with uh, a couple of races left in the series. Yeah, and I, yeah, I got to give a lot of credit to my guys too. Uh, you know, part of the reason that we didn't get you know the big wins last year was um, you know we were learning a lot of new tracks that we'd never been to and things. So uh, you know, like you said, a couple the first couple of races weren't you know extremely phenomenal, but they're you know above par. And then when we really started to pick it up, uh, you know, in early summer, late spring, uh, you know, we, we really started hitting good. And um, you know, we've got five wins, but we could have easily had seven or eight or nine. Uh, and on a you know on a 15 or 16 race schedule, that's that's a pretty big deal to us. And um, you know, like I said, I really equate a lot of it to to my guys and me as a team. You know, just the whole thing has gone great. Uh, we have just meshed really well. We all understand each other, and um, you know, we've had a lot of a good luck with our, on our side this year too. So it's just been uh, you know something you couldn't almost ask for to be as, as dominant as we have here lately. Well, it certainly has been quite a ride for you, Travis. Now, I have to ask, what's in store for you for 2014? Have you even had a minute to, to, to think about what's ahead? I know you still got a couple of big shows left for this season, but have you given any thought at all to what might be ahead of you next year? Yeah, um, you know, obviously with, with our statistics, uh, we have, you know, great potential to move up, and, and that's what we're looking at, and, uh, we're you know, we're trying to build some good sponsor relations and things this fall and winter, and, uh, you know, it's going good so far, and, uh, you know, the goal is obviously to just come up the ladder every year, and um, so win the championship this year, we'd really like to move on to, you know, something like the Canaan, and the NASCAR, or the ARCA Series, or even, you know, as far up as the, the NASCAR Truck Series, so... Um, who knows what you know? What's really in store? You know, as as all race you know race fans and race drivers know, it it really comes down to you know what you can do off the track uh, to make it work. But uh, you know, like I said, we we really have all the potential in the world. So now it's just time to to put it down and and make it happen. Well, congratulations on a tremendous season so far. I know it's not over yet. You got a couple of races left there in the in the series, and of course the the big one at uh, the end of the season at the Nashville Fairgrounds. I know you got to be keying on that one. Yeah, that one for sure. And honestly, though, this next race coming up, which is actually the you know the the, the points championship season finale, even though we've already locked the championship up, but uh, you know, the Winchester 400, that is a race there that, uh, you know, we won one of the races, the first race of the year down at Winchester, and we finished second, uh, close second uh, late summer, so I would really like to win that one. That is, you know, what I consider one of the crown jewels in all of, you know, super late model racing, or really in all of racing in general. Um, you know, to be on that list of names that you see on the back of the church every year would just be, you know, it would be something special to me. And, uh, and Nashville, I've never been to Nashville, but we're definitely going to go, and uh, that's going to be a fun race, too. And and uh, hopefully, you know, you never know. We got two in a row, two wins in a row right now. Uh, it'd be really cool to end it out with four wins in a row and counting, you know, the, the, the Lucas Oil Fall Brawl, Winchester, and Nashville. That would be cool. Well, I know you don't do it alone, so uh, talk to us about sponsors, uh, team members, anybody you'd like to thank. Uh, first of all, you know, i got to thank my family, who, you know, most of my career was, they were my sponsor, <laughs> in other words, and, uh, and if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have even began racing, but, and they still are so, you know, so deeply into, into what I do, but, uh, you know, I've had a lot of great sponsors over the years, and uh, they've all stuck with me. I've never lost a sponsor yet, and uh, a lot of them are local to where I live, but, you know, as we've grown up, um, you know, one of our, our biggest new uh, partnerships is with, you know, where I go to school at West Virginia University. Um, they've been on the car all year this year, and it's been, that, that, that sponsorship there has been really cool because like I said, all my other sponsors who are a little smaller, but they're all, you know, a West Virginia company. And for them, it's so cool to be a part of West Virginia University and, and that little piece of it. And it, it's drawn so much attention to, you know, our race team and the race car and me, um, you know, having that, that WVU on the car. It's, it really looks great, and, and it, it's been uh, – it's amazing, like you said earlier, how far away a lot of the races in Syria are. Well, we'll go to a race in Michigan or Wisconsin – and, you know, you'll be signing autographs and things before a race, and there's always at least a handful of people that come up, you know, that are born and raised or, or used to live in West Virginia. 
and they just love it, and um, they're instantly fans. I mean, it's just they all instantly connect. You feel like family, uh, you know, being from home state, and uh, it's been really cool. Well, again, congratulations, Travis, on a great run so far this season. We hope that it's not over yet for you. We wish you the best in the rest of the uh, big races that you got coming up, and we'll be keeping our eye on you. And that will wrap it up for this segment of the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Report. We're going to throw a caution flag. When we come back, it will be time to talk pass late model series north division racing and we'll hear from their track champion from this season cassius clark right after these words for 17 years stock car steel has been a leading material supplier to the racing industry we're proud they're a motorsports content partner here at race chaser online the biggest names in nascar trust stock car steel for raw materials such as carbon steel chrome molly dom aluminum plastics and much more you can't build a race car without the basic materials and stock car steel is the place to get them don't forget to also visit stock car steel sister company sri supplies for racing and industry sri is the place to go for all your shop supply needs no Nuts, bolts, rivets, tapes, adhesives, cutting tools, chemicals, body shop supplies, paint shop supplies, lubricants, and more. A well-stocked race shop is a winning race shop, and the path to winning begins with three letters, SRI. For more information, visit StockCarSteel.com or SRI-Supplies.com. Check them both out on Facebook or call them toll-free at 1-888-752-7272, 1-888-752-7272. Packers. Vikings. Red State. Blue State. We come from different places. Uptown. Downtown. We come to different conclusions. Half empty. Half full. But no matter how different we are, we're all connected and we can all make a difference. That's why United Way brings people, expertise, and resources together to improve the education, income, and health of our communities. The building blocks for a better life. When we live united, our efforts, magnified by others, add up to real change. Children succeed in school, families gain financial stability, the health of our neighbors improves, and suddenly, so do our communities. But real change won't happen without you. Live Live united. United. So let's look beyond our differences. Live Live united. United. One by one, let's make a difference. Let's reach out a hand to one and influence the condition of all. (laughs) Live Live United. United. Give, advocate, volunteer. Live United. Sign up today at liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. You're listening to WSPD 77.1. This is Speed 77 Radio, your home for motorsports. Welcome back to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Report. While Travis Braden was wrapping up the ARCA CRA Series title, one of the East Coast's top late model series was crowning their champion as well. The Pro All-Star Series, better known as PASS, North Division had their season finale at the Oxford Plains Speedway in Maine. DJ Shaw won the battle, but the winner of the championship war was none other than series veteran Cassius Clark in the Hype Motorsports number 77. Clark picked up the title after a race that saw him three wide and at times not so handsome as he tried to keep Joey Doran in his sights. As Doran began to fade, Clark assumed control of his own destiny and took home the championship honors. We caught up with uh, Cassius Clark and talked to him about his championship run in that final race at Oxford. Here's a look at what he had to say. Cassius, congratulations on the 2013 Pass North Championship. Talk a little bit about the season and talk about this last race at Oxford. Well, oh, thanks. Yeah, it was uh, it was it was a good season for us. Obviously, uh, you know, it's nice to to come out on top where we came so close last year. Uh, you know, my first full year with the Hype Motorsports team there and everything. Um, you know, we started off the season racing with uh, Joey Dorian for the for the win, and then it, it, it came down to the last race. We ended up being tied. You know, tied in points going into the feature, and we were, uh, you know, we ran one, two for, for part of the race there, and uh, you know, three wide for the, for the lead. It was quite a battle, and you know, pretty fortunate that we came out on top. Talk about the difference from last year to this year. Is it just your experience, your comfort level in the car? What, what do you think was sort of the difference maker that put you over the edge this year to be the champion? Um, you, you know, just a, a little bit better. You know, we had everything in place to be able to do it last year. Uh, we just had a couple of bad, 
you know, of maybe another bad run compared to what we had this year. Uh, I think we just had one one bad race where we actually, um, you know, didn't finish didn't finish the race or, or finish towards the, the tail end there. Uh, so the consistency was there last year, and we had the speed. Uh, well, we won more races last year, so I think we started off the year with a little, you know a little bit more speed, won a few more races last year, and they switched tires. So we've kind of kind of been chasing that, and you know obviously we've run well with with the tires as well, but we weren't quite as where we thought we were, um, you know, with the with the oldest set of tires there. So we went into the last race and, and actually went and tested and, and tried to focus on you know getting our car to uh, to you know run as well as we could, and, and we got a real close, and and we had a you know a real really good car for the for the race there. And, and contended for the lead most of the race, and and then when you know Joey started um, back pedaling there a little bit, we were able to kind of maintain what we got and kind of just step back a little bit. And, and if they had a late race caution, we just want to ensure that we had plenty of car left to uh, you know to finish where we needed to. So. I was going to say it. Uh, it seemed like you really had your stuff together going into that finale, and of course, DJ Shaw ended up winning the race. But you won the theoretical war with the championship. Uh, it, it just seemed like you felt real comfortable that entire race. Yeah, um, you know, we, we had a you know a test session the, the day before there, and obviously a test session uh, the week before. So uh, you know, it was we knew what we had to do, and then it was. Uh, you know, real evident what we needed to do at the start of the feature. We didn't have any uh, any points on anybody then. We were we were tied up with Joey and and had a little bit of breathing room on on DJ. I knew he'd be uh, I knew he'd be good. And I knew Joey would be good as well. And then obviously, um, you know, I knew DJ basically had to win the race to uh, you know to even have a shot at at getting it. You know, typically where we finish. So um, no, I was comfortable. I was able to uh, you know start. I started behind Joey there. He he gained the points on us in the heat there, and I was able to follow him up to the field, and we get to the you know the front uh, real quick, and I just want to make sure I could you know see see what his car was doing, you know, because basically we had to had to beat him. That was the only way we were going to be able to uh, to win the championship. So if I wasn't able to keep up, we were going to have to pit and try to do something. But I felt comfortable with my car, and I could see him slipping a little bit, so I was uh, I was pretty confident we'd be able to come out on top. Well, you got the championship in 13. What does 2014 hold in store for Cassius Clark, or have you even had a chance to think about that yet? Yeah, well, we just got finished up here, uh, you know, just uh, last week. So uh, I'm sure we'll probably end up doing, uh, you know, the same thing and everything and hopefully, uh, hopefully have another good year. Pass North is one of the toughest late model series in the country. It's amazing the amount of competition in your series, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Uh, you know, there's there's so many good guys up here that have actually proven themselves, gone down south and raced in all the different series. And yours are always always front runners. I mean, you've got you know Johnny Clark, Ben Rowe, Mike, you know Mike Rowe, and now you've got you know Austin Terrio and DJ and Joey and Travis Benjamin and all those guys. And then you know you come to a track like Oxford there just for a final race, and we had 50 cars there. So um, you know we've had strong fields this year with a lot of cars and everything. So. Hopefully it's continuing to uh, to grow and, and pick up some, uh, you know, the fan base and everything. And uh, I think everything's looking good in the past north. Well, they can call you champion, but I know they can't call you champion alone. So talk about who uh, helped you, sponsors, teammates, anybody you'd like to give a shout-out to. Yeah, obviously you need to, you know, thank the, the Hype family and the whole Hype Motorsports team. They've they've been at it for, for quite a few years, and this is their first championship as well. You know, like I said, we came close last year. Um you know, and they've got a lot of you know instrumental people on the on the team that have been there ever since they got started. You know, all those guys, and they brought in uh, you know Brian Burgess as a crew chief when I you know when I got uh, you know started driving for him, and, and he came on last year there, and he's been a you know championship crew chief with uh, Ben Rowe multiple times in the past. So he brought a lot of knowledge to our team, and and uh, you know really stepped up our program, and has you know put us in position to be able to win these these championships. So I need to thank all of them and you know, their high dealerships and everything, and uh, I think that's it. Well, congratulations on a tremendous season, Cassius, a championship season, and we wish you the best of luck going into 2014. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it.
Incidentally, the Pass South Series returns to action this coming Saturday at the Dillon Motor Speedway in South Carolina as veteran Jay Fogelman tries to maintain his 34-point advantage over Kyle Grissom in what may turn out to be a battle that goes right into November in the series' final shows. The Sunoco Super Series, Sunoco Southern Super Series, is also in action. They head to Mobile International Speedway in Mobile, Alabama this Saturday to decide the track's Miller Lite Championship. Currently, John Hunter Nemechek leads Daniel Hemrick by 16 points in the track standings. The youngster would like to wrap up that title and the Gulf Coast Championship title this weekend. In the Gulf Coast Championship battle, he trails Hemrick by 15 points, so every spot will be important in the finishing order when the pair hits the track in the Roll Tide State this coming Saturday night. NASCAR Wheel and Modified K&N Pro Series East and Pro Series West Series are all off this weekend, but the Wheel and Southern Modified Tour heads to Southern National Motorsports Park, where Burt Myers is the only multiple winner in that series at that speedway. He's also on the pole for this weekend's event. As he qualified there before the uh, rains came, that should be a good show out at the Southern National Motorsports Park just outside Raleigh, North Carolina, this coming Saturday. Finally, one special note, k and Series East rookie Dylan Kwasniewski will be a special guest on this Tuesday night's Motorsports Madness show right here on Speed 77 Radio. Join Jacob Seelman and I along with our cast of racing insiders at 7.30 Eastern Time this coming Tuesday as we share news, views, and interviews from across the racing world. And we will have Dylan Kwasniewski with us this coming Tuesday night. That will bring out the checkered flag on tonight's Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Report. Our show is a Speed 77 Radio Race Chaser online production and can be heard in podcast form beginning 24 hours after the broadcast by visiting Race Chaser Online's YouTube channel. You can also go check it out at stockcarsteel.com and sri-supplies.com. That will bring up the checkered flag for the show. A special thanks to Jacob Seelman of Speed 77 Radio, as well as to all the folks at Stock Car Steel and SRI Supplies for making this show possible. I'm Tom Baker, inviting you to check out StockCarSteel.com and SRI-Supplies.com for all your racing needs. For all the news of the day in motorsports, your first choice for short track news and driver interviews on the web is Speed 77 Radio, powered by ChaserOnline.com. Until next time, so long everyone, and have a safe racing weekend.